story, or let's say story time, because I understand there's some older children out there too that enjoy these. So if, if the young children will come out up front, we'll have them. Go and form another 
high with, with the, the queen. Two queens? Two queens? Yes. Yeah, if there's two queens, they will fight until one of them leaves the hive or dies. Can't be more than one queen bee. <laughs> okay. So, by this time, his grandfather had removed the top of the hive. It's kind of like a roof type of thing. And he got to the first two boxes or frames under that. And this is where they have preformed honeycomb that slides in these frames. And the bees will come in there and put the honey inside those little honeycombs. As you can see on the pictures there that I, I have for you to share those. So anyway, he only works with those top two bones, the hives, or they call them supers. The bottom one near where the queen is, he never touches. You know why? Because the bees have to have that honey to get through the winter. So he'd never take all the bees. So lucky for us, bees make two to three times the amount of honey that they really need. Good for us, right? And our sweet tooth. Anyway, when his grandfather would pull these frames out of the honeycomb, the bees would be still hanging on them, just busy as bees. And he'd just give them a good shake, and then he'd put them in this large Tupperware container with a lid. Well, a plastic container anyway, it might not have been Tupperware. But anyway, he puts them in there, and then he goes back and he gets them, he shakes the bees off, puts them in there, and until he's got all he needs, right? So then he puts everything back together, and he, they jump in the car with their plastic uh, box of, of honey come frames, and they go home. Now, when they get home, they get all that white robe and gloves and bushes and their, their boots off, and they get in comfortable clothes. Well, then his grandfather has to extract the honey from the honeycomb by scraping off the beeswax that closes up those little honeycombs and preserves it. So he scrapes off the beeswax. Now, he doesn't throw that away because beeswax is really good. They make beeswax candles out of beeswax. And they're more expensive because you know what? They don't have any toxins in them. They don't have any chemicals. They don't smoke, and they seldom ever drip. And that's why they're more expensive, beeswax candles. Well, anyway, um, by this time, Johnny has been watching all this, right? And he's thinking to himself, seems like an awful lot of work to do to get a little bit of honey. In fact, he finally told his grandfather, how come you're doing all this work to get honey when you can go down to the store and they ship it in from China? You know? And, you, and it doesn't cost that much. But his grandfather said, you know, locally grown honey is more nutritious and it helps people that have allergies. It helps them fight their allergic reactions. So you always want local grown honey. And besides that, if you didn't have those bees there pollinating the orange trees and all the other plants that we need for food, you wouldn't have any oranges, right? So bee pollination is very important. Now, about this time, Johnny's, Johnny's looking, and, and he noticed that in one of the buckets where the, they've been gathering the honey, there was three little bees stuck on the surface of the honey. Oh, they were struggling so, the stickiness and everything on them, and they just, they couldn't get loose from this honey pot. And it really upset Johnny, and he told his grandfather about it, and you know, his grandfather looked at it, and he said, well, I don't know, you know, if I try to get that stickiness off the little bees, I'll probably pull a leg off for a wing or something. I mean, you know, it just seems kind of hopeless to him. But then he saw how upset Johnny was. So what he did was he scooped the little bees off and put them in a little plastic cup and he took it outside and put it out of the way where they wouldn't have to watch him struggle. Well, later that afternoon, his grandfather called him up and says, Johnny, come here, I want to show you something. 
So he goes over to the cup, and those three little bees there that were all sticky and everything, there were all these other bees gathered around, and they were cleaning them up. They were cleaning all that sticky honey off of them little bees. Amazing. Well, before he went into supper that night, Johnny went back over and looked. And you know, all the bees were gone. All the honey had been cleaned up. And they were able to fly away. Now, those little bees lived because they were surrounded by family and friends who would not give up on them. Family and friends that refused to let them down in their own stickiness and resolved to help them until the last little bee could fly away. Proverbs 11, 25 says, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. What a promise. As we choose to refresh others, God will also refresh us. Do you know somebody that is struggling with a problem? Are they overworked or overwhelmed? Are they at the end of their rope? We'll help them. Pray for them and let them know that you're there to help them. And you'll be rewarded by God. It's a promise. Hebrews 6, 10 says, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown them as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Okay, let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we hope that we can be as helpful as those sister bees were that we can be there when a person needs encouragement and needs prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for the constant help that you give us and love that we know you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.